guys. We um, on Friday we well we did not. I came home to a saddled horse, but um, he got saddled for the first time. Today we're gonna do um, a little bit of the groundwork that I usually do. Th this horse in particular is kind of moving along a little bit faster because so far he hasn't been much of a much of a problem. Um, but I do want to go back over how to saddle him for the first time and some of that because I have a sneaking suspicion it didn't go that way when I wasn't here. Um, so we're just gonna talk about that a little bit and then just kind of go through the steps and I know that uh, Preston stood in the stirrup a little bit on Friday and so we're gonna do some of that and maybe maybe get on him today we'll see how it goes so um, I'm just gonna kind of walk through what I usually do and I haven't kind of shown you how to saddle it one, one thing I'm kind of particular about is that like if I'm if I'm doing something with a horse unless I really need someone else to have a hold of them I'm I not a big fan of involving multiple people because like especially with a horse like this um, Everything that I do, I can control where my pressure and stuff is on him. So when you're working with someone else, all that has to happen is that they don't make the right move and it really affects what you're trying to do. It can be kind of confusing. We also tied him. I think that you guys tied him the other day. Did you tie him up? We tied him up for the first really time today and he stood for the last couple hours tied up out there. And you know, he's a really, he's a really good minded horse. Like if you, if you give him the option of kind of finding release, he's, he goes to that really easily. So that's nice. So, um, you know, he doesn't seem to really care about a lot, but this is kind of a white pad here. So that might be, a, be an issue. When I'm saddling and doing stuff, a lot of times I'm either going to keep my rope up like this or I'm going to put it in the crook of my arm where I can grab it really easily. Um, but a lot of times I, I kind of do this because I can grab my rope if I need to. Um, one of the things that I really like to do with horses is I want them to be, I want them to be quiet, but I don't want to sneak up around them and people can do that a lot. So then, you know, they don't get used to taking, like, having stuff happen at kind of a normal speed. So it's just as easy when something scary is happening in the beginning to do it at the level you're going to eventually do it at instead of um, kind of tippy-toeing around it. Um, so definitely one thing about saddling here, this is another thing. Um, I, do you put it up over, you put it up over yeah. the stirrup here? Okay, so that's something that... I know a lot of people do when they saddle their horses, but the, the best way to saddle a horse is, and I don't know, let's see, you might not be in a good angle there, but is to do it in just kind of one fell swoop like this. So if I'm gonna saddle him, I'm just gonna swing up and over. And see, in the beginning, this is what I would have done because if it got kind of set up there on him, then you're kind of sneaking around about it. And I want to know that I can just go, you know, put stuff up there and not have to worry about it. The other thing is, is if you do that and then he starts dancing around like this, and I'm sure you guys had him kind of like trapped in somewhere and he couldn't do that. But if he starts dancing around and that comes down and slaps him in the offside, you know, I'd rather have him just get used to having everything swung up on him like this. So, I mean, there's some really obvious things about saddling. You're always going to do your front cinch first. You're always going to undo your back cinch first. Um, and, you know, kind of once you start to saddle up a horse, you're a little bit committed once you get the cinch around them. So you do want to be kind of conscientious about making sure you get them tight enough to have a good handle on He didn't look like he was going to be something that would really buck and blow, even though he did buck a little bit. So I'm going to have a hold of here. And this is why, like, if, if I'm going to saddle a horse by with somebody else. I don't want somebody else holding on to him because I want to be able to control that he doesn't jump on top of me, you know, if I cinch him up here and he goes to buck it. So for me, the first time I saddle one, I usually don't do up the back cinch right away. I usually get him saddled like this and leave that back cinch hang. Um, and I usually have him take a step or two and just kind of see how they're going to be. Because I don't mind him having a little something kind of hang in there.
this is kind of where the stuff that we've done before comes into play. That back here is a little tighten this back and set this a little. So one thing you want to be able to know you can pull them around like that and kind of get his hind quarters disengaged. So you don't, that's why what I was saying, when you take a hold of him and pull on him, right, mm -hmm. there's going to be a time when you get on him, they're not going to just stop to a pull the first few times. Yeah. You're only going to use to where you kind of, you know, what you're teaching him here, that I can pull on your nose and get a hold of your hind end. And what is that? What would happen if you can you can take a hold of their nose and get 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 their hind end to do that? What are you preventing them from being able to do? Look, right? Because they can't buck if their hind end's up behind underneath them. So if this horse knows and learns on the ground that when he starts to, you know, kind of get a little bit alley, that if you draw him around like that, you're disengaging his hind end. And that can kind of save your save your biscuits because when you start riding him, you're not going to be um, you're not going to be just pulling on him like you would a broke horse. Okay, so we start riding our horses in a little rope bozelle like this. One of the things I like to do before I step up on one is tie them around a little bit. Just see how they respond to being trapped as far as having their face trapped and kind of send them around a little bit, make them have to follow their nose. That's what you're going to do when you ride them. So our reins are a little bit short because we had a little bit of an incident with another horse then, um, a few months ago that left, left them a little short, but I think they'll work. So this has some similar feel um, to a rope halter, and that's one of the reasons that we, we use rope halters on all our young stock. I tie one around. There's a couple of things that this is going to accomplish. It's going to teach him to follow his nose around. And it's also going to put a little pull on the saddle. ridiculously smart. <laughs> like this is not just again like the obstacle. It's not typically how it is. But I want to know before I get on a horse kind of what he's going to do when he's put under pressure and in a little bit of a new situation. Yeah. Um, get, get. I'm actually not going to overdo this with him because I feel like it's pretty That went pretty well. I, I think there'll probably be a little bit different to the other side. And I'm also a big, um, when you're starting horses, you can't have a pre-designed idea in your head of how exactly each step's gonna go. Because for example, most of our horses, that wouldn't have gone nearly as smoothly because they'd have, they'd feel trapped and they'd be goosey and stuff would happen. So they might need to stay tied around a lot longer. You know, I'm going to look at this horse and go, well, if he really accepts things, I'm just going to keep moving forward slowly. There's no reason to like harp on something. I don't have a preset 
you know, like series of things I go through for exactly this long. I want to kind of read the horse and see what I think he needs. I know Jordan, see we have a whole full crop of four-year-olds um, that Jordan's starting. <laughs> and I mean, most of those have been ridden, you know, for 60 days now. And there would still be some times where this would be an issue, you know. He's pretty accepting of. this out on his own because one of the nice things about being able to tie horses around and check them up is that when he gives the exact see right there where he finally gave to that pressure he'll get the exact amount of release there's not somebody sitting on him accidentally bumping him one time too many or not giving him release he can I'd like to see him follow his nose around. Because I don't want Preston there to go right one time and have him, like right now, he's learning what it means to follow pull around. Because that's pretty much all that's going to happen on him the first. That's what, you know, Preston's going to have as a, as steering when he gets on him the first time. Now, if this would have been where we just gone climbed on him and pulled him right the first time, he might get in a little bit of a bind because he's a little bit more resistant here on the right side. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to get around here and get past his, his drive point be able to stop him, but I'm not going to beat up on him because he's following his nose around. I'm just going to kind of keep stepping so I can get there without startling him. Because I'm not unhappy with what he's doing because he's really doing exactly, you know, I just haven't really been able to work myself, so I don't want to reach up and scare him. Just to get him on time. See, you can see he stopped as soon as I got back past his pressure point. So like for, for me, Preston, I'd be a little bit, like when I had you, I wanted you to work on his right side a little. Yeah. But that's where I think we're going to see the most issue. Like, you know, when you go and put your leg down on the other side, okay. that's probably the most likely where he's going to get jumpy because he doesn't even think about his left side. Okay. Well, when you turn a steer, you turn what? No, <laughs> this horse is going to do more than just rope. <laughs> you're going to have the rope on your right side, so I feel like the fact that he's terrified of anything being on his right um, side is not going to serve you well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let you kind of, we're going to throw this up here. I'm going to let you step up in the stirrup a little bit. So, I'm going to just show you before we start doing that. There's a couple things. 
I'm gonna have you do it on both sides. So when you go to step in the stirrup, you're gonna have his nose tipped to the direction you are like this, okay? okay? You can have a hold of it here, but you always have to make sure you have, to have a hold of both reins and you got his nose tipped. Okay. So then you're gonna put your weight up in the stirrup. For me, before I ever get on him, I do that on both sides and make sure I can do that because horses see differently out of each eye. So it doesn't just, like he'll turn from this side and when he sees you on this side, you're pressing on this side and a cougar on that side. If he hasn't seen you on both sides yet, that's the brain is kind of split depending on their eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That yeah. makes sense, so you need to do that on both sides. And then the other thing is, is I always stand in the stirrup and make them take at least a step while I'm standing in the stirrup and still have the opportunity. I want to know what they're going to do in that first step or two, Okay. you know. So you just keep their nose tipped a little bit. And, you know, all I want to do today is we'll see what he does when you step up in the stirrups. We might have you just swing a leg over and sit there. That's probably about all for today because that was a bunch of different, bunch of stuff. And then tomorrow we'll do the same. I pretty well time around every day. So come on up here and take a hold of him. Make sure. And you're not going to have to be quite as worried about your cinch because his withers are so big. But. He's a hundred pounds. <laughs> see, oh, this yeah. is why I wear stretchy pants. <laughs> Just saying. Keep his nose bent, yeah. And you can talk to him. Boy. So while you're there, just kind of pat on him. Yeah, good. And just be, you know, be ready to step down. You don't want to get your center balance up over his back so that you do a somersault, you know? I mean, you're on camera and that'll be good watching, but. <laughs> your dad yeah, would good. like it. There, just pat on him. Even when he gets tense like that, good. Okay, yeah, step that. down, step up a few times. You can be quiet about it, but don't be too quiet because you don't, you, this is still a point where you want to know, you know, you don't want to scare him, but you also want to know what he's going to do when he is a little nervous. Good. Okay, let's try the other side. Just so you know, if he goes to bucking, you're on your own because I'm scaling the fence. <laughs> yeah, the camera might get a little blurry for me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not nearly bent enough nose, <laughs> right? Because if he starts to go, you want to be able to have a hold of his nose good. There you go. You don't want him to be able to get two, two running steps before you. <laughs> how do you even find tight pants on your side? I know how I find them on my side. That's a, that's a hard leg to get up on now. Yeah. yeah. I know, I don't. I, I actually, do when I start them, I actually don't do much on the right side just because I'm not very, I try to let them see me on the other side because I'm not very handy with my right leg. But him, he's kind of scared on the right side. Yeah. Right. That's why we're doing this. He's still, I mean, he's scared for him. You know, it's the only place that there's a little something like that where, like, most horses would give you more than that. Eyes, he's, he's asleep. Yeah, but don't. I mean, one thing, even with horses like this, you don't want to take any of that for granted because I mean they can wake up pretty fast, and there'll definitely be times where like you're on their back and they kind of forget you're on there. And when you go to get off, that's it's fine. Sit to there. Step. Good. Talk to him. Good. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Good. You can step down. All right, well, I think you can go, you know, go on the left side and turn him around. And I think you can swing a leg over and sit on him and just pet on him. Okay. But just keep your, you know, keep his nose tipped. And we're not going to try to do any more with him today than just be able to sit on him. And might want that. Go ahead and just pat on him, John good boy. Good. So if he'll if he'll take a little step around to the left, that's all right. Okay. So, I mean just just ask him with your hand and yeah you can keep a hold of the horn with your with your right hand. Right. Kind of give him direction just like you would have with out to the side.
And if he takes a step, you're going to release. Yep. Keep bumping him just a little bit, just like, not with your legs so much, but with your hand, because that's what he knows. Uh, not there, put your hand on his face, like how we were giving direction oh, with. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead and smack him in the butt with your hand, see how that works out. So just like, give it out to the side where you want him to go. There you go. He lays down and falls asleep on the other. Good. If he takes a step, even that little was was almost like a step. Keep his nose set. There. Don't get yourself oh. all in a funny position. If he takes a couple steps and bogs his head, then you're gonna be patient. First step's kind of a big deal. Don't wrestle with them, good. Just encourage him. Get a hold of both of you right here. And take a hold of both hands, yeah. Just... It's all right, don't get frustrated, it's okay. There, good, just soft, that's good. Just relax, good boy, good boy. Good, just pat on him. This is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. I think that's probably all we should really do. I mean, we could turn him the other way, but he's he's being awfully good. I mean, the point isn't to try to get him to a point where he gets head on him. Oh. He just pulls what his head say? right around there. The Lord, the Lord looks after children and idiots. Both, <laughs> both Jordan and I are just like, oh God, you're gonna turn directions. Like, that's that's usually just so you know. Usually, when you go from Left, left to right, right like that is when most horses come give unhinged. it to you yeah really? yeah <laughs> really yeah. <laughs> he is doing really good try to get him to step that way You know, I'd probably just, I'd probably just pet on him a bunch right now and just let him have his head a little normal because he seems to not have a problem with that, but just be ready if you needed to pick him up to, because what you don't want to do if a horse kind of takes off is you don't want to just grab up on him. You, you're going to have to just pull left his or, nose left around. Left right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good job. Just keep betting. Yeah. He's like, I mean, More than anything, you always want to make sure that a horse enjoys its job. So you want to try to end everything on a good note. You know, you have to remember that if they keep want to come, wanting to come out every day, they're always going to be better than. This is going to be like such an unfair. Jordan's like, this sucks. Because everything I, I Jordan to has see to ride that's go. the same age is like, oh, he will. I mean, he's, he'll start pushing on him and he's going to. You know, the first time he lopes, the first time he does stuff, he's going to kick up a little bit. It's just that Jordan's colt starting experience hasn't been quite so simple. His are like squealing back on the fence. and <laughs> My first day was from hell. <laughs> yeah, the first day he settled something here, it went through a panel. and Oh, my God. oh yeah, no, literally like, oh, like yeah. through. First day. I don't mean ran the panel over. I mean put its head through the panel, took the panel down, broke the sat, ripped the whole fender off the saddle, oh. like his first day at work. That's All right, well, I think we probably should just, same way you get off. Yeah, keep his nose tipped. I love this how he rubs his foot on so their butt. This is so unfair. See that? Yeah. I rubbed my leg all the way down. <laughs> you did it getting on, too. Want to say something? I don't even know what to say. I that was really good. You did good, plus. And I mean, a lot of it is being able to stay really quiet, and all of that does help. Um, I mean, he definitely is comfortable with you, and that's awesome. I mean, it's not at all right, boss. This yeah. is not what it usually looks like. 
That's not normal. That's not normal. <laughs> this is not normal. Um, even for really good horses. I am glad to see, though, it's not like he's just super dull and dead. I mean, he has times that he'll, he'll test boundaries, but... Again, like I said, it's one of the reasons that this is such a cool project is that, you know, this is a horse that would have been, you know, lost and he obviously has a really good mind and that's really good. <laughs> as important really as anything else that a horse has. So we have to say, Preston, what do you think about it? <laughs> uh, he went in it really good. Really good. I mean, he's responded to everything that we feed him to do. Well, and definitely one thing we noticed, he didn't get worked at all over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, and he definitely has put on, like, over his top line, enough weight that you can visibly see a difference. So that made us happy, too. So, anyway, tomorrow it'll kind of be more of the same thing. And we'll just keep videoing, hoping that he bucks. But I'm not sure that that's going to happen. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.